Hey guys, Basil and Will with Grayson Hobby, and today we have the solution for all you people who have trouble with soldering. So this is a really nice little product. Um, we get a lot of people coming in asking, hey, how do I learn how to solder? What do I do? They're scared to solder on these $70, $80 flight controllers and very expensive electronics, because let's face it, things are getting more complex and harder to work on and smaller. And smaller, yes. All right, like always, if you find this video that give you value, subscribe to our channel and give us a big thumbs up um, and make sure you hit that bell button and all that notification stuff and if you are new to soldering put it in the comments let us know what is your biggest fear or biggest obstacle when you solder so we maybe we can address that in the future actually what's your biggest screw up in soldering how bad have you screwed up because i know i've had some doozies wires backwards everything so if you want to see what this board does stay tuned if you're new to this channel grace and hobby is a shop located outside of atlanta georgia where we sell and ship out quads and airplanes and drone parts and everything of sorts. And everything you see on our website is located here in our good old USA warehouse right outside of Atlanta. So what we got here is a nice little packaging with something inside it, a practice solder board. This is actually really nice. I got a lot of guys that are very, very nervous about soldering onto something like this, this little $70 micro flight stack. <laughs> um, with all these wires, people get very intimidated by it. And they're like, hey, I don't really, I'm not good at soldering. What do I do? And instead of, you know, this is a hobby. You need to learn. And I think it's a great idea that Diatone came out with something like this called the practice board. And it has various holes of different sizes. You got your, like, solder pad style here. You got little circle ones. Um, the through hole, larger through hole, smaller through hole. Um, and they even have some, I think it's on, the, yeah, they got the edge solder ones right there. Oh, wow, look at that. So that's pretty cool not only did it come with the practice board it came with a little bit of solder for you so you can actually practice with what it came with um that's really cool and i would imagine this is probably like uh 60 40 solder probably is what they're using but um so but it didn't come with the most the second flux. most important thing yeah so that actually leads capacitor. to this if yeah. you guys are going to be soldering um what i use everybody asks me what i use this is flux the solder paste flux it's rosin flux um, I also use some 6040 solder right here. Um, the flux is about four dollars. This big, large solder thing is—I think it's around ten or so. You're gonna use your how many builds? Oh, Hundreds this of builds, this right? will last a long time. Now, yeah. if you're not like, oh, I'm gonna solder every day and build every single quad I can make, um, you know, you can get a half ounce instead of a four ounce thing of solder for about three, four dollars. Okay. Basically, this is a, just a great board to learn how to solder. If you're trying to brush up on your skills, um, you're new to this and you wanna learn how to solder, this is a great design. I'm actually shocked this was not in the hobby sooner. Um, this is awesome. It's like a breadboard that's without any Yeah, kind of... do not skimp out on the a soldering iron. Flux, good solder, not lead-free. Don't get lead-free solder. Make sure you get something like 6040 or 6337 is preferred, but it's harder to find. 6040 is more commonly available. And we have all this stuff in stock, TS 100s, the plugs, so you can actually use power plugs, different, uh, different the wider tips. tips and the narrow tips. Yep. Um, so if yeah. you, yeah, so make sure you have a good solder. Up. The tools are essential. This is just flowing the solder to it. And I'm got about 350 degrees Celsius here. And there's a couple different ways you can do it. You can flow the solder there and it comes out. If you get a nice little shiny solder pad, like, or solder blob like that, that's good. Um, this solder flows very well, but if say you're running, um, you like these little small things. I tend to use flux. Um, simple fact that it's it's like a magnet for solder. So how do you, how do you flux? Tell everybody how you flux. Um, I just put a little bit on. You can do like a toothpick or something like that if you got one. I'm just using this wrench here. Okay. But um, let's just say I usually like say if I got multiple surfaces, I kind of just brush it across like that. Okay. And you'll see you got it on there. And. Now, what kind of soldering iron is that? TS100. TS100. You can just flow the solder there, and you can see how quickly it it flows now compared to let's do this one see, it takes a minute to actually flow so the first and two it didn't the... go all the way across see how it's got like that side there, it's not yeah. really flowing it takes a minute to get the heat there but with the flux on it the sucker just sucks to it now one thing to say with flux say you get all that um the over, the splash on it right there the 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 gooey part mm -hmm. that's not conductive you don't have to worry about it like shorting anything out um if you have a q-tip and like rubbing alcohol or something like that you can clean it off um if you're ocd about your builds and you don't want anything like dirt sticking to it kind of thing okay um that's one thing if you're 
if you leave it like that and you fly it around dusty areas and all that, you will have dirt stick to it. So I usually use a Q-tip and uh, like rubbing alcohol and just clean it off. And one thing you'll notice here, what they did with this board, you can see actually they, not only did they put different styles, they changed the spacing. So you got really wide spacing to learn with and then get progressively closer. Because a lot of people go, well, what happens if I put too much solder and I bridge it? Bridging is when the solder jumps between two pads and like a lot of times it's positive and negative and it'll shorten, you fry your stuff. I'm just gonna dip that in the flux okay. directly just because I can, I don't have to brush it on. And I'm gonna put it through here and show you guys some through hole solder in there. Now you wouldn't put a wire through there, that's more for the pins, right? You can put a wire, I usually just lay them on top. Depends okay. on the solder job. So, so I actually probably should have put a little flux on the uh, holes themselves too. Would have been a little better. Okay. But let's see. There you go, L lesson learned. Put flux, can't put too much flux. Yeah, correct? no, you really actually can't. Okay. Just makes it messier, that's all. So what are you looking for when you solder? I mean, what's you want a, a nice shiny solder joint. If it's dull, it's not a good solder joint. And you want a real hot iron. Yeah, you need a good wattage iron. You um, can't get that garbage from Home Depot or Walmart. You gotta get a real good wire. Yeah, a good That's iron's cute. gonna go much farther than this. Yeah. Okay, another common one, like the RXSR wire harness, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, I know my biggest problem is I have to, let's say I need to do... Well, let's use a real life example every here. Every other pad. Or I have to skip a pad and it's real tight. So the one thing I'd always say is tin your surfaces, like plan ahead. Um, so say this is like your flight controller right here and you got four pins in a row and you got uh, and you ground positive signal, etc. Yeah. So what I would do in this case is get the little flux. And I like using the flux a lot because it just helps keep everything clean you know flowing well flowing solder so say we're gonna do this one and then oh so i got a i got a big know? bulky iron here so this is gonna be fun okay how do you know how much solder to put on basically you want it to flow the pad okay so you mean cover the whole pad with a little blip but not not like a size yeah of just a, a nice little rounded blob now let's say here let's just Let's go overboard here. Say I put too much solder and I just bridge those two. Yeah, that's I see that that ha that's co very very common. So what you do on that case? Okay. So what are you doing over here, guys? I, I just clean the iron with a sponge. Okay, wet sponge. And and you're just kind of like sucking it back off, right? Yeah. So you and don't use extra. You could flux. use braids, stuff like that, um, and all that to clean mm -hmm. it off. Um, I did not, though, on this case. But you got to be careful if there's electrical components there. You could actually get it onto something else. But um, that's all there is there. So it's better to go too little and then too much. It's easier yeah. to take, easier to put on than it is to take off. Yeah. All right. So another one that people have trouble with is like the actual battery leads. This wire here. I'm just going to go ahead and take it, stick it in the flux. Okay. And again. When soldering a battery lead and all that, I like to tin everything first. All the surface that I'm that I'm soldering, I generally tin first. It just makes things easier. And if I had it in a holder, like if I was actually holding it on like a helping hand, I'd probably flow the solder and all that together, but just because of the way I'm doing this. It's really I mean there's a lot of wrong ways to do stuff, <laughs> but Gets the job done. How many wrong ways have you seen? <laughs> oh, don't use bubble gum to solder. Or super glue. Do not super glue your connectors on. It does not work. Or hot glue. Or my favorite is the uh, electrical wire connectors. Oh, yeah, the wire tie thing. From Home Depot. Like like household wire. Okay. All right. So in this case here, because I'm going to put this in these little slots, okay. I'm actually not going to pre tin this wire or this, this pad. So let me just put I've never this. actually seen that particular horseshoe looking dealio. A lot of the ESCs now are doing that, the mm -hmm. cutouts. Um, this was actually very common in the car stuff. Okay. RC cars had this, I think. I saw that more first. But what I am gonna do is I am gonna put flux on the surface that I'm soldering. So I got a good bit there. And again, there's really no like, oh, you can't too much. It's just gonna be messier, that's all. And then I'm gonna clean my iron. I always try to clean the tip of the iron because the solder tends to oxidize and just, it just makes, a mess so I always try to clean between each solder um, 
And then this is the fun part because I only have two hands. But let's get a good blob of solder on the thing. You know, line it up in here and solder, you can see it flow. And you're just barely touching that with that hot iron. Yeah, I just let it flow. So, okay, so the back side, see it didn't flow very well. Mm -hmm. Because I want a good strong bond, I'm actually going to do both sides on okay. this one. So, so you're gonna I'm going to go right here. Flip reflux. No, yeah, I'm going to flip it and do it just to make sure the solder flows. So, that's pretty much all there is to it. And if you really, I mean, you can add more solder to it, kind of thing. You can keep flowing on there, but just remember if you get too hot, it's going to fall off. All right. Uh, common problem. They have, let's say, you have to change out the connector. Heat it up, pull it off, right? Yeah. Just know, like, if you have an ESC, the power leads and all the motor wires, uh, Typically they share like a common ground kind of thing So you're gonna have to get a lot of heat to transfer to pull the wire off These are gonna be pretty easy to solder because there's just the individual pads. Okay, um, they're not You know connected to anything else now. I know the old days we had to solder multiple wires to the same pad Is that how it is now in this in this new day? Um, typically like a signal ground or something like that maybe but that's about it. Okay side pads. Yeah I never So used them before, though. this particular this solder board it looks like they are there, but it's not the greatest I'll try it anyway Again flux is your friend. Yeah, I'm gonna just brace this up here. Okay, so you're using a helping hand. Yeah This is the doing it with as little as possible soldering and If you had a pair of pliers, you could actually take a pair of needle nose and a rubber band. band. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah back in the day all right, so I'm gonna go ahead and tin that. Oh yeah, I did tin. Okay, cool. So we got the side pads there, and of course I am shaking. No pressure. I'm just trying to hold it weird for the camera, but um, yeah. So you could do it like that too, but this one, yeah, this one doesn't have a lot of solder pad on it. I'm just desolder this so we can stand it back down now. But so you can do it that way. Uh, let's see. So typically what I like to do on a lot of these though, like even the through holes, um, I don't really use the through through hole stuff. I usually just solder on top. But if you're in a you know area where you're getting a lot of pulling, there's some people like, oh, you got to do a through hole. You got to put through. The, uh, no, I don't think so. Um, so you're talking about putting the wire physically yeah, I just through the lay it on, Yeah, I just lay it on top. But like, some solder. Sometimes it's hard to get a wire that through that hole. That's for sure. Yeah. So you can just do it like that. Um, let me see if I can actually. So these are pre tin so they're a little harder. But let's see. I think it can. Yeah, it'll go in there. Okay. So you could. Um, and then solder you, on the back side, right? Yeah, just flow the solder from the back side and all that. Okay. But yeah, there's just different things here. But this is just a really nice little board um, if you want to learn how to solder. But it's various like receiver wires, power leads, servo pins, stuff like that. This is actually pretty good regardless of doing planes, quads, anything like that. Um, this pinout right here is like the spectrum receivers, the, the new spectrum receiver. The pinout's going to be about this. So you got one millimeter, spaced out one millimeter. You got uh, 1.25. Uh, those look like 1.5. These are these are uh, 1.5 here, and then you got these little ones. The seven flight controllers, the Mobius Seven and HDs. These little circles. When you solder the camera pad on, one of the uh, pins for like the smart audio and all that for the VTX is one of these little pads right here. I've seen a couple flight controllers out there that use larger pads like this. I don't really know why, but they do. Um, That's a lot of real estate. And you'll see a lot of these on like the older Mamba stacks had like this on the ESCs. Uh, CL Racing uses a lot more like this style right here, etc. So this is a great little variety of various ones. So if you, you know, for a couple bucks for a little practice board, you can get one of these and then not ruin your not ruin seventy dollar. Yeah, because guys, let's face it, these flight controllers and stuff they're getting expensive. There's a lot of technology in these things, and they're getting tinier and, tinier. and they're getting small. So that's the nice thing about this little practice board. It gives you the ability to. I guess just boost your confidence with soldering and all that. Yep. That's the biggest thing is so you can practice it and be like, okay, I got this. All right, good job, Will. So, so we should have about 1% less uh, tickets about soldering. 
<laughs> the little board there, um, again, if you're new to soldering and you need some practice with it, definitely check out the Diatone practice board. Uh, it's a great investment that's going to save you money in the long run if you're learning how to solder. Right.